good evening, everyone. Good early evening, everyone. Uh, as Michael said, my name is Jordan Cram. I'm the CEO of Instoa. We're a technology and consulting company based out of New York City. Today, I'm going to talk about Internet of Things and construction. This is about everyday building materials, equipment, assets, being communicative, communicating with one another, with people, and with the Internet. I want to start with the end in mind and give you five key takeaways. First, what is IoT? Let's create some awareness around IoT. Two, that devices are intelligent sensors. Uh, this is relevant for you all as leaders of facilities. You're in, you oversee tens of thousands of assets, components, potential communicators, and millions of square feet. Third, I want to really emphasize mobile. We have just begun to understand the impact for mobile in our lives and in our, our business operations. Four, uh, about establishing a data capability inside your organizations and what behaviors you need to be ready for or to be prepared for in this IoT era. So uh, I'm going to bypass a bit on security and privacy, although it might be on the forefront of forefront of your minds because we are talking about massive amounts of data and sharing of data. Uh, just bear with me in that we're going to sort of sidestep it today for the sake of time. Uh, over the next 16 and a half minutes, we're going to talk about the Internet of Things. So what is IoT? Uh, it is a buzzword. It's sort of a catch-all for everything that's new and hot in innovation. Uh, and if I don't know if any of you are like me and you stay up late occasionally looking at Google search history. Um, but I've done that for the Internet of Things because not all of us have heard of the Internet of Things. It uh, has hit an inflection point. That's the number of people that have been searching on this term in Google. Uh, around 2013, it hit an inflection point. So it's spiking up, as buzzwords do. Um, but I want to keep all that into perspective because while IoT is hot, it is not as hot as Miley Cyrus. If you zoom in on the little bit down there in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the impact of IoT. Uh, IoT's hot, Miley's hotter. Um, but the Im economic impact of IoT is substantial, and it's substantial in the near term. The services spend on IoT is going to grow 400% over the next four to five years. McKinsey estimates that the economic impact of IoT could be a tr $11 trillion, uh, and that it's going to reduce maintenance costs significantly, it's going to expand the useful life of equipment, and it's going to decrease outages and failures. Uh, so what is IoT? When we think Internet, maybe we think Google. Maybe we think web browsing. Um, now, I'm a web searcher. If you look at how many searches I've done over the last few years, I've done it 19,620 times. It's just under an average of 10 searches a day. Now, there's a little insight into Jordan's habits. You can see where I land. Um, I'm buying stuff on Amazon. I'm looking for answers. I'm researching. And, of course, I'm looking at people on LinkedIn. <laughs> um, Google is a massive collector of information, and they've got very smart algorithms that can help predict outcomes. It's a good analogy as we move into IoT. Um, if you just meet somebody new for the first time, you could use this as a conversation starter. Have them pull up a smartphone, have them pull up a web browser, and just type in a word and see what Google anticipates they're interested in. So it's kind of like a quick way to get into a person's psychological profile. For example, if you type in the word how, Google thinks I may want to get away with murder. It may think I forgot how to tie a tie, which I haven't. Uh, when? Now, this was done on Saturday, so rightfully so. Google's knowing that I forgot about daylight savings. Um, where? I like this one. Like, where's my phone? Where's my mind? Maybe less relevant. Uh, plan. We're all planners. So Google here is convinced that I'm done bearing children. I'm satisfied with two. Uh, and I do buy a lot of plane tickets. So, uh, but the Internet of Things is not just about big data and algorithms predicting things. It's about billions of devices or billions of things connected to billions of things. That is every ha everyday household items, everyday facilities items and devices, uh, all communicating to one another, all communicating to aggregated or centralized systems. 
what's enabled this? Why IoT? Why now? There's really three macro trends. The first, Moore's Law. Second, Metcalf's Law. And the third, the maturity of big data and analytics. We're pretty familiar with Moore's Law. Back in 1965, it was predicted that the number of transmitters are, transistors are going to double every two years on a circuit board. That proved true up till about 2013, when it went from two, two years to every two and a half years. The second, uh, more recently, the uh, Metcalfe's Law, is that the value of a network is proportionate to the square of the number of nodes or devices. If you have two devices or two nodes, the value is four. Add three devices, the value is 25. Add seven devices, 144, so on and so forth. Um, and that third enabler for IoT is big data and analytics. This is taking massive amounts of information, analyzing it, and using it to produce meaningful, useful information for the work that we need to do. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that we were nervous about sending one megabyte, you know, a file with a one megabyte attachment. You know, now we talk gigabytes. Some of us talk terabytes. If you want a four terabyte little device, you can go on Amazon, and uh, for $300, it'll arrive on Wednesday. Uh, two years from now, three years, five years, we'll be speaking petabytes. We'll be speaking exabytes, zerabytes, yottabytes, so on and so forth. So the amount of data and information that we're collecting is just growing uh, significantly. So those are the three trends, Moore's Law, Metcalfe's Law, and the maturity of big data and analytics. So what else set the stage for IoT? Why now? You know, it's 2015. What else set the stage? Is that the decreasing cost of component devices is, is really substantial. For $4, just a mere $4, you can have a device that is smart. It has a CPU. It can process information. It can communicate. It's got a Bluetooth sensor. And it can know positioning information. It's got a gyroscope. If you have $10,000, you can buy 2,500 of these. So the decreasing cost of these component devices has also enabled it. Um, things are connected to the Internet. Back in 2008, there were already more objects, you know, inanimate objects, things like watches or phones, connected to the internet than there were people. Now there's just under 5 billion. By 2020, some estimate th there will be 50 billion devices connected to the internet. Uh, that would include cars. Quarter of a billion cars, 250 million cars are going to be connected by 2020. That's only four to five years from now. All of those communicating, uh, and some predict that by 2025 there will be no such thing as traffic. We'll have to explain this to our grandchildren as a phenomena that we all grew up with and suffered. Uh, some say by 2025, 2030, we'll never wait another red stoplight again. That's all enabled by these devices connected with one another and producing meaningful intelligence. Uh, the other enabler what's setting up IoT is mobile. As I said, mobile is, has just begun to have the impact on how we how we do work and how we live. Last year, there were 1.6 billion smartphone users. This is astonishing. By 2020, there will be 6.1 billion smartphone users. That means there's not going to be that many people on the planet who are not connected with a smartphone, you know, above a certain age range, like, you know, 18 months old or something. Um, that's another trend that has set the stage for IoT. Now, I want to give a quick personal example, and then we're going to move into a clinical application and a construction application. Um, anyone a Wazer? People use Waze on their mobile device to try to avoid traffic, and I'm sure we're all tweeters here. Uh, and then there's me. So this is kind of a semi-automated example of IoT. Um, I fly a lot. Clients tend not to come to the Instow office. They ask us to come to their office. And between you know, oil companies in Saudi Arabia and mining companies and Saskatoon and healthcare clients in the US, uh, predicting flight delays is not an insignificant amount of the stress for me. I guess that many of you suffered from this yesterday. Uh, here's an example. Uh, let's say I'm in Midtown, and I want to get to LaGuardia, and I want to know if my flight is actually going to be on time, let alone fly. Where do I go? I first check Twitter, hashtag LGA. And I can see that at a certain time, you know, we're 15 minutes delayed. It's getting worse. Uh, people are complaining. Everybody's tweeting. Another 20 or 30 minutes later, it's reaching now, you know, an hour and 57 minutes, and people are putting up all these cancellations. So tens of thousands of people are providing content. I'm trying to digest this. I'm using Waze, being in Midtown, 
and I know that if it's 1.33 and I leave for LaGuardia, it'll take me exactly 26 minutes. If it's 6.42, it's going to take me exactly 42 minutes. Waze at any given time has 20,000 people in the New York City metro area, all communicating information to each other and centrally about traffic patterns. So between the Twitter information provided by thousands of people and the, and the connected devices through Waze, we have predictive power, we have insight. That's an example of how we can weave these, what appear to be very dis dissimilar sources together to provide information. Again, IoT is about billions of things connected to billions of things. It produces intelligence that we can act on, information that we can act on. GE was, uh, or has been, kind of a first mover. They are trying to rebrand Internet of Things into the industrial Internet. This is a very interesting example. This is a uh, section of Quebec. It is, a inf it is information that's based on historical failure rates, historical equipment information, as well as weather data. And what it's doing is it's predicting outages. It means that respondents, teams you know, that want to keep the power grid up, are able to focus only on the red spots, be ready to respond. So they don't have to wait for the phone to ring. They're ready to be there, and they're, re and they're available to uh, react on uh, outages. A clinical example. I'm just going to spend a few seconds on this because it's fairly well documented. Uh, many people have spoken about the impact of uh, Internet of Things on clinical delivery. So we've all, we have wearables, Apple Watches, phones in our pocket. I don't know, does anyone have a jeans or a pants wearable on? Uh, <laughs> one. Okay, good. Uh, all of this information can communicate vitals, right? It can communicate vitals to uh, the, the clinical professionals who want to get ahead of a, healthcare, of a, of a health incident. Um, all of this is enabled, again, by the multiple devices that would include people communicating with one another. Now, I want to switch gears and talk about an application in construction. As a caveat, I have ignored practicality in this. Michael Owens told me to be free thinking about ideas, you know, to get the creative juices going. So, in doing so, I've ignored the implementation uh, challenges with this. And so, this is just theoretical. Uh, but if we took three devices, a drone, a microphone, that communicates on uh, a low range frequency that costs about a dollar and a half, and a sensor that's there in the blender that can detect, detect the temperature of concrete because it's attached to rebar. It's in a blender because everyone wanted to demonstrate that it's in indestructible. So we're gonna take these three devices and we're gonna build out a scenario. Uh, we work with Cedar sinai there in Beverly Hills, much like you all, their campus is expanding. While they've got large hospital space, they're building an increasing number, uh, renovating an increasing number of off-campus locations. And this is a hypothetical example. Now, they still have to survey that. They still have to monitor and oversee the work that's being done in all of those places. So what would we do? With our drone, we're gonna fly over and see what's going in and around each of these sites. Um, now that's, real. Uh, CDM is a, Smith is an engineering and construction company. They've obtained FAA clearance to fly their drones up to a certain elevation over their project sites, you know, whether they're building a bridge or whatever they're building. Uh, so you can imagine, you know, the drones sort of seeing what's going on in and around our site. Inside, we've implanted thousands of these little microphones. Now, those microphones may have blocked out the voice spectrum uh, for humans, so there's no privacy issue here. We can't hear what people are saying, but we can pick up things like, are there any, is there any activity in the space? Is someone pushing a cart? Are they jackhammering? Are they drilling? Are they hammering? Is there one person? Are there 12 people? So it can pick up that sensor information and communicate it back. And then we've got our sensors in the floor that are telling us when the concrete has reached the perfect temperature so that we can commence our building activity, as opposed to you know, boring holes, doing other tests, and so forth. So we're taking all that sensor information, the drone, the temperature reader, the microphone, 
plugging that into a big database, and then we have over on the right side a master schedule, say a P6 schedule, and it's doing an analysis without the time-intensive process of going out and auditing and evaluating. It's then kicking out to this smart little mobile device and telling Jerry, the project manager, you don't need to go to site A, you need to go to site B. Uh, and after you go to site B in the afternoon, you need to go to site F, all based on that connectivity of things speaking to other things. That is IoT. That's the Internet of Things. So I'll leave you with maybe three takeaways of what you could do to sort of get yourself ready. Number one is that following Metcalfe's law, we need to connect systems. Data in a silo is, has very little value. The square of one equals one. If we, can, we need to start today interconnecting these silos of information in order to obtain the value uh, of those connected systems. We will have to address, obviously, privacy and security. A significant amount of investment and focus is going to be related to privacy and security given the massive amounts of information that's going to be flowing over wireless networks and connected devices. And uh, last but certainly not least, we need to start building an organizational capability or a paradigm. I would submit to you that we need to start building it yesterday to in ensure that we have the right behaviors and the right way to think about and use this massive amount of information. Uh, that is going to be coming available to us. So with that, I will close in this uh, introduction to the Internet of Things for Construction. Thank you very much.